Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann. Today I want to talk about the series Magic and Misrule, of which I've read the first two books. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the series Mishaps Heroes. Um, the first two books, uh, Magic and Misrule is the first one and Death and Devotion is the second one. These are both by K.M. Merritt and I will link to her webpage down below because she has a number of other series that look absolutely delightful and I intend to read everything she's ever written. So that's a little preview of how much I enjoyed these two books. Um, this series, Mishaps Heroes, is a wonderful take on a very classic um, Dungeons and Dragons, World of Warcraft, um, like R.A. Salvatore, Dragonlance, like all of that, you know, you form um, a party of heroes who have to go on quests and save the day. Um, so that whole genre of fantasy, that's what these books are in. Um, but they are a very light, humorous take on those. Um, they're not exactly young adult, really, but certainly like teenagers could read these. Um, but um, they don't really like feel as if they're specifically for that audience, if that makes sense. Um, but they're certainly very appropriate to that audience. So going with the lighthearted, humorous take, basically. Um, and in this first book, uh, we follow, oh gosh, and now I'm forgetting names because it's been a while since I read this. Here we go, Vola. I read this like a couple months ago. Um, Vola is the main character. She's sort of the party leader and she is a half orc paladin. So for those of you who are familiar with this um, sort of genre of quest based, party based fantasy, um, Orcs and half orcs are never paladins. <laughs> paladins are like the just uh, soldiers that have divine backing. Um, and so Vola um, was a half orc, is a half orc, um, went to the Paladin Academy and has faced a lot of discrimination and hardship uh, because of that from the other paladins in training and from the like paladin council that like passes you through the academy. Um, so she's pretty scrappy. Um, and definitely has sort of like a protective shell around her. She's not the sort of person that lets anybody get close to her. Um, so the book opens with Vola has just graduated from the academy. She was sort of barely allowed to graduate and, and only because one of the very famous, like highly um, respected, like paladin trainers, like really backed her strongly. Um, his name is Henri or Henry. Uh, it's Henry with an I instead of a Y. So I want to say it French, but I don't know how to say anything in French. Um, that name, Henry. Um, and so he is now judging her on her first quest because to sort of complete her qualifications as a paladin, she has to complete a, a quest successfully. Um, but nobody wants to hire a half orc to do a quest. Um, and she also doesn't have anybody to help her out because she's a fairly unfriendly, closed off half orc paladin. Um, so the book is basically just about her, like finding her place, um, sort of in the world and finding her people. So she does put a party together. They embark on a quest. Um, it's full of hilarious mishaps and endearing moments. Um, there's some funny jokes about the flower collecting quests, which if you've ever, um, you know, when you play D and D or you play world of Warcraft or like those sorts of games, there's always these very silly quests where you have to go into the swamp and collect like 20 of some type of flower. And you're like, why the heck am I doing this? And it's just on the way to do something cooler. Um, so there's many jokes, um, around that, that sort of thing, uh, that make this book a lot of fun. And of course, the party that she puts together is full of people who are um, outcasts and misfits uh, in various ways, because in the start of the book, they're the only people who are sort of willing to work with her. And they're the ones who are also um, sort of cast out and looking for community and looking for a place. Um, and so the book is just absolutely wonderful because, of course, you know, the party comes together um, and they do better than anybody thinks they will. Um, so yeah, so this book was a lot of fun. As I mentioned, it's focused on Vola, the half orc paladin. Um, and, and, you know, she goes through a lot of character development throughout the book. Um, and then it's the start of a series. So Vola is the main narrator still moving through the series. We're still seeing things through Vola's perspective. But in the second book, um, there's sort of another uh, focal character, even though it's still Vola's perspective. Um, and that is Sorrel. <laughs> 
forgetting the names here, um, Sorrel, who is a halfling who joined her power, joined her party um, in the first book. And so in this second book, um, our, our heroes embark on a quest that's a, a continuation of um, sort of like step two in what they were doing in the first book, because of course, um, as you would expect from this sort of genre, um, everything they accomplished in, in book one, they sort of get to the end of the book, they think they've accomplished something, they think the story is over, they think the quest is over, but surprise, they've actually stumbled onto something larger. And so now they're continuing to explore that um, in uh, the second book, Death and Devotion. And um, we learn more about the halfling Sorrel, um, who is a monk or potentially an ex-monk. Um, or like sort of a monk who just has left her community because they refuse to accept her. Um, she's a very wonderful, very charismatic character. Um, so we learn more about her. We learn more about her backstory. And um, even though this book is still told through Vola as the main narrator, um, we still see a lot of character development with Sorrel and we see her going through sort of a similar process of like self-acceptance and um, growth in the context of this new party that truly accepts her for who she is. Um, so yeah, these books are just absolutely lovely. Um, if you want sort of some lighthearted fantasy that also like pokes some fun at the genre, um, which I definitely appreciate because the fantasy genre can be, um, yeah, a bit tropey, a bit silly at times. And so these books definitely embrace that and, and, um, sort of poke, poke some fun at that in a good natured way. Um, so I highly, highly recommend these, highly recommend this author in, in general. Um, she has her other series that I will definitely be checking out is um, like fairy tale retellings, where I think each of the main heroines has a disability. So the first one that got a lot of press was, um, I believe I'm remembering this correctly, I think it's Cinderella, but Cinderella uses a wheelchair. Um, so I'm really excited to check those books out as well. So that's what I have today. Um, please let me know if you've ever heard of this series or heard of this author, or if you're interested in checking her out. Um, again, I highly recommend these. I'm gonna be ordering um, the third book soon so I can continue with this series. So thanks and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.